Ike commentary breakdowns. So we all know Tsilala, our man right here, is about to go into a big tournament. He's sparring with someone bigger. It's a good way to practice, but also he usually goes up in weight. Or what I mean by that is he usually doesn't make weight and he fights people that are heavier than him. It's kind of like a sack robin away. So here he is sparring with someone. Not only is this guy um, bigger, he seems more controlled. If you remember the other time Chilala sparred a big guy, that guy was much more uncontrolled. So Chilala putting his hand out like a Wing Chun guy. Interesting. Interesting. Huh. Huh, interesting. I, I guess he puts that hand out to, to go over the opponent's lead hand. Is that why he's putting it there? Because I don't understand why you would extend it all the way. Wing Chun people inform me. But then, of course, some Wing Chun people would be like, Chilala's not doing Wing Chun anyways, Jerry. What are you talking about? That's a weird impression of Wing Chun people. I don't know why. Maybe Wing Chun people talk like this. I don't know. Anyways, so um, back to the action. Very controlled. Ooh, okay, so I got a little standard kickboxing block. Um, those hands serve as kind of distractions, but oh! Our taller guy throws a spinning back fist. Or spinning hammer fist, one of those. Huh. If you notice, the opponent is orthodox. So, let's see if Chilala can use southpaw to his advantage. Opponent gets his head off center line when he throws punches. That's pretty good. Um, again, big shout out to CTBJJ Taiwan. We've seen a lot of matches here. Ooh, Chilala 8-1. Oh, okay. 90 seconds, says the, um, whoever's keeping time. Oh, that was pretty good. Oh, all right. Not bad. Not bad at all. Look at that. He even hits the ground. It's like, oh, that should not have happened. Um... Our big guy. Oh, that was pretty good. Yes, I was going to say, use your jab to set up. Like, the jab is to gauge distance, right? So, don't strike at Silala's hand. Strike at his face. Sometimes, I feel like he's striking at Silala's hand. So, maybe Silala putting his hands there actually serves a purpose. Sometimes, you forget to strike at the face. Also, Silala's pretty effective in this case, using certain Wing Chun blocks and stuff and parries. Oh, Okay. Oh, oh, good little helmet blocks. Answer the phone blocks to counter those um, hooks by our um, big guy. I don't know what style the big guy's training in. Oh, Chilala, that was a great kind of um, step to step off angle and throw a hook. Or maybe it was a cross. I need to go back and watch it again. Um, Chilala, I think, has taken advantage of it a few times where our guy, um, the bigger guy, he kicks, but he doesn't kick all the way through. So he kind of like um, is in a disadvantageous position sometimes when he kicks. And Chilala's taken advantage of that a few times and um, attacked him or taken his back. Chilala also doing a good job blocking those kicks. So that was the end of the... Sp that was not three minutes. Guys, did we talk for three minutes? That did not feel like three minutes. Guys, was that three minutes? Wow. Um, yeah, I would have not known that was three minutes, guys. Um, how do you slow this down? Uh, am I able to slow this down? Again, guys, putting the arms all the way out, I'm not a fan, but I guess look at that, the, our, um, our taller guy keeps, uh, um, jabbing at that extended arm, so in a way, Chilala's, it's working for him, see? Chilala's almost like, I'm gonna make you think your jabs are doing anything, but it's not really helping you gauge distance. What, what, what's the point of putting your hands out? And then... It's interesting that our taller guy, his his lead hand is pretty low. I guess to protect against kicks and stuff. And then he also sometimes switches his stances, which is interesting. I mean, a, a lot of people train both southpaw and orthodox, right? So that was a that was a time if he didn't throw that spinning um, spinning back fist or hammer fist, he would have he would have gotten his back taken. I think Chilala saw that weakness. He was waiting for that to happen again because I saw it later where the guy did the same thing, but the guy didn't follow it up with a spinning fist and Chilala managed to get him. So let's see. Chilala exploit that. The one thing, guys, I'm going to say about Chilala's Wing Chun is that as much as he makes it work, 
I just get a feeling, guys, and Wing Chun people, feel free to disagree with me. I feel like it's wasted movement. He makes it work, right? But there's better ways. This is where, where this is where he took advantage of uh, the opponent giving his back. But a, a lot of those Wing Chun blocks and stuff just feels like it's wasted movement. And, you know, um, when you're fighting multiple rounds, those wasted movements will cost you. Just my thought. Again, um... I'm not saying it doesn't work, but you know, if you're fighting someone whose movements are more conserved, then you see, look at, I mean, th it looks cool, right? But you're you're doing way more movements than you know someone that's kickboxing trained or whatever, someone that's Muay Thai trained. Just my thought, guys. I, I'm again, you can feel free to disagree with me. That was a attempt at a takedown by Tilala. I just realized, guys. Um, besides that, wasn't just an answer to the phone block. He's actually kind of elbowing his. Uh, his attacker strikes, which is very Wing Chun. That was one of my favorite parts. Step off, angle, throw. So it was a hook. Or, or you could call it a Tongbei Kung Fu. So it wasn't a complete hook, but it's basically a hook. But Chila would probably say it's from Kung Fu. It's, for, it's a Tongbei Kung Fu hook. But it's a hook. So. I think what's interesting is... Oh, I think um, the big guy needs to watch out. I don't know why when he... When he throws a cross at the body, his face gets so close to Chilala. He can eat a knee or something like that. So, again, man, it's awesome that Chilala is sparring and um, testing his abilities against a really big guy. I think it's really cool. I've been in touch with the guy who's putting on this promotion, King of the, whatever it's called, King of the Dragons. So this is what he told me. These are the rules to this match. This is Chilala. Chilala is going to face a Muay Thai guy and then... Once he faces the Muay Thai guy, he's going to face the winner of one of these, right? It's an MMA guy versus a Kyukushin MMA guy. So I think we all like the more exotic matches, right? So let's hope for him to win so Tsilala can face him. But anyways, so what the organizer, Victor, told me is... So no head button, right? No scissor takedown. No spinal locks. With, so basically no cranks. No cranks of... The neck and stuff like that. No leg locks. No spiking at a point. Basically, you can't you can't pick them up and slam them directly in the gr to the ground. And also, you can't slam them on the head. No bending fingers. So basically, a kind of small joint manipulation. These two rules are no small joint manipulation. No takedown below the waist is allowed. So no di double legs, single legs, you know, ankle picks, etc. No Iminari rolls or other types of sweeps or stay. Oh, that'd be funny, Iminari rolls. No flying submissions. No jumping into guard. Not allowed to strike both ears at the same time. Interesting. That's kind of a, maybe a Kung Fu technique or a Krav Maga technique. Interesting that they had that. And no knees to the face. Oh, okay. No knees to the face. Huh. Guys, are these K1 rules? Can can you knee to the face in K1? That's interesting. You can't knee to the face. So elbows are okay. So elbows are okay, but no knees to the face. Interesting. So standing grappling. Standing grappling can be allowed. So that's interesting. So that puts Muay Thai guys at maybe a potential disadvantage if you can't knee to the face. So, but you can have a little bit of grappling. Interesting. Standing up. Ground time, so you can fight on the ground. Interesting. So you can do arm bars and stuff like that, but you just can't do flying arm bars. Interesting. So you can fight on the ground for up to 10 seconds. So if you want to get submission, it's like 10 seconds. So this is almost like modify Sanda rules, but I think in Sanda you can knee to the head. Maybe I'm wrong then. I feel like this is Sanda rules. So what is a ground position? When a t compo opponent's torso touches the ground, or the turtle position, or both are both accounted. Okay, all right, I got it. So if your body or your butt hits the ground, or you're in the turtle position, no ground strikes, no stomping, no soccer kicks, no elbows on the ground. Yeah, no elbows on the ground, or no elbows at all, or no knees. Huh. Let's see. Legal ground techniques. Yes, so you can ground and pound. Top control submissions, leg kicks are allowed. Oh, 上对下. So a person standing up, attacking the person below, this is what you can do. You can do top control, so you can put pressure on them. You can do submissions, you can punch and kick within the 10 seconds. 
And if you're on the bottom, so people on the bottom attack the people on the top. You can hit them. You can kick his face. You can um, kick his body, kick his uh, legs, shin, shu. So you can do submissions, but no knee to the face. No kicks. No kicks to the knee. Oh, I got it. I got it. Just to prevent, um, like you breaking their knee. You know, you don't want to hyperextend their knee. You can sweep the standing opponent also, and then twelve to six elbows, guys. Twelve to six elbows are allowed. Guys, this is awesome. So you're allowed to do 12 to 6 elbows, but you are not allowed to knee to the face. Okay, so when you're fighting standing, it'll be a punch, elbow, kick, knee, but of course not to the face. Palm, oh guys, you can palm strike. Oh, this is going to be good. So you can do kung fu techniques, karate techniques there. Forearm strikes, which will help Wing Chun people. Shoulder strikes, okay. Throws takedowns above the waist. Takedowns from, takedowns from what? From catching? From catching, yeah. Takedowns from catching. Cage control. Okay, so that is it, man. Let's look at their YouTube channel. So this is their YouTube channel, and that's their Instagram. And actually, they actually already created um. This is cool, guys. They created a little uh, what is it called? Like a teaser video for Chilala. Oh, this is pretty cool. He's Chilala's thirty-seven, man. Oh, that's it. Oh, this is this is audio, right? Am I right or am I right? I'll, I'll figure this out, guys, but, um, yeah, so you guys can follow their Instagram. This was Fight Commentary Breakdowns.